Coming up on the Dolphin Channel News, an inside look at Ken Burns on JU campus and a fundraising event to help out a former JU Dolphin. Welcome back to this edition of the Dolphin Channel News. I'm Haley Muley. In case you missed Ken Burns on campus, reporter Chloe Linden gives you a look on what you might have missed. For a second year in a row, JU honors one of our nation's best with the Presidential Global Citizen Award. We're an academic institution. That means we're all about learning, and there is no greater educator in my mind right now in this half of the century, then our next speaker, please welcome Mr. Ken Burns. This year, JU hosted the film industry's premier documentarian, Ken Burns. The university honored Burns for his work and recognized him as an extraordinary leader, leaving a legacy for generations to come. His day on campus included a luncheon, a student question and answer, as well as a private screening of his upcoming productions. The Emmy award-winning director inspired many on campus. Uh, he was really just probably the most intellectual person I've ever heard speak. So uh, to gain that experience and just kind of be in that presence, it was really just an amazing experience all around. Getting to watch him present and show and getting to see little clips of previous work that he's done and the future work that he's now working on, I'm now inspired to kind of watch more of that because it's right up my alley. And leaving his audience informed and inspired is the legacy of Ken Burns. Thank you for your attention on such a beautiful day. I really appreciate it. You can find many of Ken Burns' documentaries on your local PBS station. Some are available for viewing on Netflix. At the end of last semester, one of JU's own survived a near-fatal collision. Critically injured, this JU alum and member of the class of 2015 continues to fight her way back, now with a little help from her fellow Dolphins. You could say Christy Charlebos is a fighter surviving a car accident and beating the odds to live. She continues to make progress, yet finds herself in need of additional help, the cost of her medical bills. The Brothers of Sigma Nu and Sisters of Tri Delta stepped up with the Try and Get Even event, taking pies in the face while raising money for Christy. This is something that she used to have a lot of fun with when we would do this. This is an annual event that we usually Nico do. Down. It Nico. means a lot to me personally because like, I know that she would love Nico it. Down. If she could be here, she would. The grand total from the fundraiser, nearly $700. The money will go towards Christy's medical bills. The Jacksonville Juniors are setting youth up for success. For over 25 years, with the help of hardworking staff and professional coaching and training, the players learn to dig deep and swing high. In the last year, JJVA has earned over $250,000 in donations, allowing for an expansion of the facilities three times over, equipping the athletes for a successful serve. The next step for the Jacksonville Juniors has them traveling to the Midwest to compete in the Colorado, Colorado Crossroads Tournament. It's been one year since men, men's lacrosse last played. They finished their last season on a disappointing six-game losing streak. The Jacksonville University men's lacrosse team establishes its season with a win. Your Dolphins will look to finish this season with a better record than 2015's 4-8 finish. JU will play Duke in the middle of February in a big matchup with a Division I school. Duke is the winner of two out of the last three national titles in men's lacrosse. JU last played Duke in early February 2014 and lost 16 to 10. Your Dolphins' only primetime game of this season was a loss against Monmouth earlier this month at the sixth annual Moe's Southwestern Classic. JU students showed up to the River House for the JU vs. UNF basketball prep rally. The event included gifts, 
raffle tickets, and food for JU students and staff before the tip-off of the game. Captain J.R. Holder talks about the importance of the game. We would have liked to came away with a win, but all in all, we played good. Even though we came, we're in third now. We played hard towards the end, and good things could happen because of it. The Dolphins were defeated 81 to 80 in the final seconds um, we of the just game. Keep playing hard. I don't think it really helped nor harm. We want to um, play the best of our, play the best of our, our abilities and see where it leads us. It's a great atmosphere. I love it. We had a lot of um, guests there, like the Jags players. Um, we need that. It's hard to beat a team three times. We lost, you know, at UNF and here. But all in all, we just want to give our best effort and see where it leads us. The JU men's basketball team returned to Swisher Tuesday night with a loss to Lipscomb University, which put an end to their season. The JU freshman dorms have made bikes a popular status on campus. Reporter Sierra Jones tells us more. With nearly 200 acres of land, many students ride bikes around campus. Bikes of various styles and colors stroll from North Hall to JU's main campus. Bicycling saves money for college students on a tight budget. Even if you live on campus, bicycling can save you time. Bicycling goes about twice as fast as walking. Not only do bikes save time and money, they're a great form of exercise. We can, see, we can plan on seeing these two wheel cycles burning up the roads on campus for many more years. Reporter Hannah Shammy gives us a look at what JU campus has to offer. As the new semester begins at Jacksonville University, you may be surprised to learn what the campus already has to offer. The track around the Dolphin Green leads to the river where views of the city, sailboats, and landscape can be seen. The track continues to the W.C. and Susan Gentry Boardwalk that features the St. John's River wetlands, and other Florida native trees and foliage. JU's campus provides a natural and serene setting for students to enjoy year-round. If you are thinking about living off campus next year, reporter Joshua Davis gives us a look at commuter woe. Commute for many JU students leaves them racing out the door, sitting in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, trying to make it to class on time. According to News 4 Jax, you can expect peak rush hour traffic from 7 to 9 in the morning and 3 to 7 in the evening, the same hours many JU students commute to and from the campus. Students driving from all over the city can expect driving time to be no less than 30 to 45 minutes while students coming up from the south side area can expect traffic delays at an hour, hour and a half. Son of a... On-campus security estimates that there are 1,400 students this semester, with about 100 parking spaces allotted for commuters. Finding a prime parking spot during peak school hours proves to be challenging. Students who drive to and from the campus are also welcome to park in the commuter I parking lot. JU's musical theater department is putting on the Children of Eden, opening this Thursday. Reporter Joshua Davis went behind the scenes to give us a sneak peek at the show. Each semester, the musical theater students at Jacksonville University audition, rehearse, and ultimately perform. This month, the Stephen Schwartz scored Children of Eden takes center stage. There's a strong theme of family. There's strong themes of questioning and exploring. Oh my God, we... <coughs> we won't touch it. Why not? And whether that has penalties of any kind or what the consequences of exploring uh, have, it goes beyond even any kind of biblical uh, story that we're used to um, and really explores the relationship between fathers and daughters, fathers and sons, um, parents and children. I value you students and the work that you do. I am nothing but proud of all of the work that you have all done. And I've enjoyed so much working with each one of you. Children of Eden marks Professor Beasley's 13th musical production here on campus. 
The musical premieres this Thursday and runs through Sunday, March 13th. Admission is free for students, faculty, and staff. Tickets for everyone else are available for purchase at the box office. That does it here for us at the Dolphin Channel News. I'm Haley Neely. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.